Hi, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at RESTful web services and RESTful callouts. Uh, following on from my video, uh, my previous video, which was SOAP uh, web services and callouts. So first of all, let's have a look at what a REST web service looks like in Salesforce. Here I've got my Apex class, which I'm going to be allowing a, an external service, an external platform, somebody else to call my endpoint and carry out the logic defined in my Apex class. That's my REST web service. As you can see, the difference between um, the SOAP and the uh, REST web service is this time, rather than using the keyword web service, we're using an at annotation with the REST resource uh, words, followed by a URL mapping. And you can see that here. So I'm providing the URL mapping, the actual endpoint, and that's going to be calculator. Here's my global class, same as with the SOAP. It has to be global, and here is my class containing a, an object, which is going to be what I am actually going to give back, uh, return when they call my post method here, and here's my constructor. Um, so when the um, spare party, when, when someone reaches this endpoint with uh, the method of post, and um, passes in uh, the integer, they're going to get returned some information about a number. And um, we can see that happening here. So I'm just going to use Workbench just because it saves um, setting up another, um, all, the, all the authentication and everything for this, this example. Um, the endpoint is going to be what you'd usually expect for Salesforce with services, Apex REST, and then the REST resource URL that you created. Uh, in the body, really simple in this one. A is that integer that it's going to take for the constructor and actually for my post method. Uh, and I'm going to provide it with the value of two. And it's going to be um, post. And if I execute it, uh, you can already see here, we get returned the value of, which is obviously two. Uh, you can see that it's a single figure and it's even. And that's what my my web service was doing. That's that's what it actually um, provided us with the logic. Now for actually making a RESTful web uh, call out from Salesforce, we've got this example and you may be familiar with this example uh, from Trailhead. What we have here is um, uh, just a normal a Apex class and this is going to be making a call out to a different uh, platform, a REST call out. So I've got my class and I've got a method. What I need to do is create an instance of HTTP. I then need to create an, uh, an instance of HTTP request. I'm going to set the request endpoint to my specific endpoint for wherever I'm calling out to. So in this case, we're using Trailhead's um, Heroku app. And then I'm going to set the method. Uh, and the method in this case is going to be get. As you can see, a get doesn't take any, um, it isn't taking any uh, parameters. It is getting whatever this uh, endpoint provides us. And I'm going to create an instance of response so that I can handle my send, uh, my instance of HTTP send and send in the request. So I'm going to get the response and store it here at which point I can then pass the response. So I'm gonna check the status code, see if it is 200, see if it was successful. And then I am going to, um, I understand what, what it's supposed to provide me with. So I'm going to deserialize it and cast it into a map of a string uh, as the key and then an object uh, from the response's body. Uh, I'm then going to um, take the results here, this map of results, and I'm going to get the animals out of that map, and I'm going to cast them into a list of objects. And we're going to then iterate over that object, and we're going to see what the actual animal is. So let's have a quick uh, go at that, and there you go. Um, you can already see, I, I've already run it. Let's not go and test, let's go on um, open the execute anonymous. So when I call this uh, class and method. It's going to make the call out. And there we go, we'll see a new one come up. And it's going to provide us with the same debug log. Um, but there you go. So now we can see 
that these are the animals that will be returned. So just to reiterate, if we're going to be making a web service for someone else to use and consume within our Salesforce org, we need to use at rest for web service and provide a URL mapping uh, and then provide with the type, the an at annotation with the HTTP and then the type of method that we want to provide for that method, that Apex method. So HTTP post and then provide the Apex method to which the logic for the post is going to be on this URL endpoint uh, resource mapping. For example, I could then do another method down here and do a HTTP get. You can only do one post, one get, one of each type of method within uh, a single endpoint, within a single REST resource. Um, to call out to that from an external, um, we're using this, uh, the endpoint would be uh, your uh, Salesforce org domain uh, slash services apex rest calculator for example, or it would be whatever your REST URL resource mapping would be. Um, if we're going to call out to a, um, it's a party's REST endpoint from within our own Salesforce org, um, they're hosting this endpoint. We need to create an instance of HTTP, instance of request, set the endpoint, the method, and then handle the response. I hope that was useful. Um, any questions, post them in the comments below. Thank you for watching.